Hey fans, this is MME Nuts, episode 106. 106! My name is Ingo Weigel. I'm Matt Griffith, and we are the BBC of MMA. Like British Broadcasting Channel? You know it. And we're also the MMA show by my fans, for my fans, where we walk the line between serious and ridiculous. You know what's ridiculous, Matt? What's that? This boxing debacle that mm -hmm. just happened this weekend. I, did I, you see the fight? I did not see the fight. I, saw, I don't, don't well, subscribe to boxing anymore. But me neither, but me I, I had to look it up, and I watched a few rounds. And I would say that the six or eight rounds I watched, definitely mm -hmm. I thought Pacquiao was winning. And uh, I'm not really sure how he ended up losing on the judges' scorecards, but um, there is a uh, uh, like a snapshot of, I guess, the boxing compu score or whatever the fuck they use. Sure. And he outstruck... Uh, him by like 130 landed strike. I mean, okay, if the one guy strikes 100 and the other guy is like 250, mm -hmm. who do you think won the fight? I, I don't know. Uh, the guy who looked better. <laughs> the guy That's who how I judge more. it. Well, here's my question to you. Sure. Bob Arum, I think, is, is uh, the yeah, manager. Yeah, fuck. What? He's, he's the same promoter manager for both guys, okay? And Manny's getting older. Um, they got this young and up-and-coming guy. Uh, now trying to take over the reins. You know, Manny can, can't get that fight with Floyd May Mayweather. Mm -hmm. There was a stipulation that said that well, whatever happens, these two guys have to rematch no matter what. As a matter of fact, in the post-fight press conference, I think they had a photo up. It's already set for, like, November or some shit. Does this sound fishy to you? It's Is boxing. It? Nothing sounds fishy. The whole thing's fucking rigged. It's, you might as well be professional wrestling. I don't know. How, how can the champion? It doesn't make sense to me. And what do you say about this, that the fact that this happened in Nevada again? Does it say anything about the Athletic Commission and possibly the judging needs, needs some kind of reform? Do you think, uh, Keith you know, Kaiser was asked about this. He said, hey, there's no issue with that. With the judging? Right. If, if just because your fighter lost doesn't mean there was an issue with the judging. You don't say? No. So, at what point does it become an issue with the judging? Ever? I think when they start occupying Nevada State Athletic Commission offices. Occupy NSAC? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's start because it. Because then you're going to have to deal with the questions. Okay. And the reality of your, the sport is fucked up and you're in charge of it and you need to do something about it. Exactly. Exactly. Besides always protect. Like, I get it, but every time there's any question marks against anybody or anything they've done, it's always, we're right, you're wrong, fuck you, thanks for playing. Yep. It's got to change. It does. I don't think it's going to, though. No. There's too much money involved, and, you know, I, I find it odd, very, very odd that, that this happened this way. And uh, I think a lot of people are upset about it. Yeah. And I just hope that something comes of it where maybe we can get the MMA judging fixed. Um, well, you know what? These things happen in boxing. Angle. They do. That's why I don't watch it anymore. Does, is Gus Johnson, does he call boxing? No. <laughs> like, can we wait, he get rid of him? Doesn't he? I don't know. Showtime boxing, I think he does. See? He should <laughs> stay. Go over there. Yeah. We don't want him anymore. Yeah. So, if you have HBO, actually, I'm pretty sure you can catch this this coming week on the replay. okay. I'll pass. So, so, record it and watch it. It's very interesting, uh, I, I think. No, because I've, I've went through too many times, like, growing up, watching boxing matches and seeing one guy completely kick the shit out of the other guy. And they lose the decision. <laughs> and I said, that's it. I'm Whatever. fucking done with this yeah. sport. Like, how can I subscribe if one guy clearly wins and then gets fucked in the end process? Mm -hmm. Out. Out. Well, my, my one other point yeah. is that we always say in MMA when this happens, we always say, well, the judges don't know MMA. They know boxing. The, so in they the, don't know if, shit. If that is the case, how can they fuck up boxing also? So what do they know? They know nothing. They know money, bitch. Money. I got hundreds. Fifty million dollar pay per view. You know this shit sold like you know I don't know how many That's views sick. or whatever. But these guys are banking. Maybe Dana White should start doing this kind of shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. People getting injured and <laughs> fights getting reshuffled and oops. Uh, yeah. Speaking of getting injured, who else got injured this more. week? Holy fuck. We had uh, Pablo Garza, Jose Aldo. I think Michael Bisbing hurt his gash or something. Meniscus. He's out. So, other things to talk about. What do you, EA Sports. This is delicious. Is it delicious? <laughs> yes. Awesome. Holy shit. I bought this on a whim because it's German. It's called Stiegel. Is that the new, a new alcohol sponsor? No. Then <laughs> shut the hell up. <laughs> is that delicious? This is delicious. Bards is delicious. I don't know what the hell you're talking You should tell about. him to it's buy bards. some of this and infuse your bards with some lemon. That's, that's fucking good. I usually don't yeah. like flavored beer, but it tastes like lemonade with 
like beer <laughs> together. Sounds a little fruity to me. It is. Don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> hey now. Says the man with the pink nail yeah. polish or purple toenail polish. Anyway. So um, what else is going on? Anything? No, the EA Sports steals the, I don't know if they stole the license, but somehow they got THQ to just fucking hand over the license after yeah. what, they have three versions of the UFC yeah, I think game? that THQ's in big trouble. I, I keep reading that they they're bankrupt and that's why they had to dump it. I think so. They're trying but to I thought UFC it. was like their only big game. Uh, they got a bunch of other ones. I think like that other, who's under THQ? It's like that. Uh, um, Army of Two? Grand Theft Auto clone called. Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, fucking hell. I can't remember. <laughs> you only had a computer. I know, to look I could it look up. it up. I don't have. Ingo forgets his I forgot computer. my phone, my wallet, and my iPad. So <laughs> if I get pulled over on the way home, I'm fucked. You'll be fine. So um, it'll all work out. Just bring this corkscrew with you. <laughs> just jamming <laughs> in the cop's eye. Just start turning it into your tumble. Like, yeah. officer, I got places to be. <laughs> Leave yeah. me alone. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, yeah, THQ is in big trouble from what I hear. I, you know what? There's a lot of game companies I'm reading are starting to lose employees and yeah. shutting down and merging. and a little consolidation going yeah. on. Well, I think maybe we're also at that point where you can't fucking charge $60 a game anymore. Maybe, maybe it's time. Or the, the, even the topper to that is all the download content right. where you're doing $15 for a map pack or whatever the fucking crazy yep. shit is. It's all bullshit. And maybe this is finally the time where... The consumers are not buying enough, and they're going to have to adjust the pricing back down. down. They should. Thirty nine ninety nine. That seems fair. Well, the game companies blame it on the retailers. They say that there's too much of a, like how there's a tax. There's like mm -hmm. a retail tax from the, from the brick and mortar stores that's on top of what they're making. So they're, they're saying if it goes to an online business model, it'll be cheaper. But yet, when you download from Steam or whatever, most games aren't cheaper. They're still the same price. So right. it's like, And what's then the, you, you get fucked because then you can't resell it. Right. And I think listening to them talking about, like, the next version of the Xbox or the next version of the PlayStation, it almost sounds like they're trying to do away with discs mm -hmm. so that they can kill the resale market. And that would scare yeah. the shit out of me. It scares me, but at the same time, I'm all right with it as long as, as, long as the model makes sense, you know? Like, it's kind of <laughs> nice to be able to go on Steam and go and download a game that I bought, like, in 1998 mm -hmm. or whenever Steam started. And it's still there. I can just grab it anytime. I don't have to keep it on my computer or whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, knowing Microsoft and EA and those greedy bitches. Are, well, it's, that's it's the thing. I don't, I don't, if, if, I'd be okay with it if the pricing dropped to like $30 a game. Because even though I, say yeah. I play a game for a month or two, there's still some value in the resale of that. Yeah. So maybe you get 20 bucks for it or 30 bucks. So you, you basically rented a game for $30. That I'm yeah. okay with. I do that frequently. I buy a game and then I yeah. you know, resell it. Amazon's the place, guys. If you Amazon.com slash trade in, they give you better, usually better deals than, than GameStop. Or yeah, whatever, and it's whatever. it's just a pain in the ass. You can probably get a dollar or two more selling it on eBay by it's yourself, it. but it's just fucking not worth the yeah. effort anymore. You buy you buy a lot of used games <laughs> off eBay too, right? You were doing that. I for used a while. to, yeah. I used to buy like packs of like ten, yeah. especially for kids. Like, what's in this one? Yeah, give me some of that fucking Lego shit, some of this, some of that. And, I kind of don't know what I got. But Anna it's Montana. Okay. <laughs> hey, maybe that's for daddy. <laughs> hey, no. Yeah, when well, you look through my rock band list, that uh, was pretty funny. I like, yeah, I got six Miley Cyrus songs, bitch. I'm going to make you play them. All good. What yeah. else is going on? Oh, oh Brett okay. Rogers signed with Bellator. Oh, no shit. That's kind of shocking. Wow. They're, thought... they're starting to build a roster slowly, it seems like, of like reject uh, fighters slash maybe could have been or were once before. So. Mm -hmm. Gotta watch those guys. They're they're starting. Fedor to... coming over? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I think he's still under strike. I thought he contract. was gonna retire unless God tells him to keep fighting or something. Yeah, I but think he can keep fighting. God told him to keep fighting. Yeah, go, so he'll keep fighting. Mm -hmm. I think God is his management. M1 could be M1 or God. Yeah, Equal. whichever comes first. <laughs> Probably an anal gangbang. I don't know. Anal gangbang. Nice. <laughs> 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 okay. If Fedor likes it rough. That's Apparently all I'm saying. So. Hey now. I'm saying he likes it rough. Whatever I that somewhere means. Right now, but I'm gonna let it go. What? Coxzilla is the word. Oh, what? Brother. Hey, I heard Florida's a weak market for fucking MMA. True or false? Uh, according to Dana, it's true. But I mean, I don't know. When you put on a card as light on 
superstar talent as the recent UFC and FX. Was you mean like Ian McCall versus Mighty Mouse is your headliner? That's not even a fucking five round fight. Yeah, it's, not it's a little top. bit tough to sell that. I think they had the lowest number of uh, live gate ever. It's like three hundred grand or something, Whoa. which is crazy because if you think about the amount of money that's probably involved to get it there, I would assume they spent at least that. That didn't even cover salary. Yeah, so it's like wow. So they lost money to put that event on. Yeah, because I think fight of the night and sub and KO of the night kind of shit. You're at what sixty five a piece, so you're like a buck ninety ish. Is that how much they gave out? I don't or know. Or is it thirty? It usually huh? seems like sixty five okay. per event, unless he's feeling saucy, wants to do the seventy. Matt Hughes country style. Yeah. Hook it up. So I don't yeah, know. Right. I don't think it's a weak market, man. There's a lot of good MMA gyms out there. This is an American top team out they there. They are. The Black Zillions are out there. You know, they got a lot of good guys, and there's there they do H E Net fights there. They do Bellator there. They do a yeah. bunch of XF. C, I think F XFC XFC. That sounds good. Yeah, sounds right. It's like KFC but different with an X. <laughs> extra fucking <laughs> extra chicken or something. <laughs> it's all good. So, I call bullshit. <laughs> On what Bisbing being injured? That too. But no, I don't know. He's got a torn. Right, I don't buy any of this fucking. Got a torn this. This has got to be the biggest stretch of like injuries ever. We talked about it. like what's happening. His I think is fucking bullshit. I think he just didn't want to fight Boach. And he's holding out, Maybe. so whatever. I have a theory. Go ahead. I was reading some stuff. Uh, I remember when I was back into baseball for a while when I was in college mm. and high school. Um, I remember the time when, like, steroids started to become a big deal. You started noticing these crazy injuries happening a lot in baseball. And there was a lot of research done that correlates, like, performance-enhancing drugs with, with higher rates of injury in players. Could be. Because not only are they training harder because they feel good, but they're stri they're stressing their muscles and everything to the, you know, to the maximum capacity. So I wonder if we're seeing something similar in MMA where the supplement and vitamins, special things, are starting to infuse the sport so much that guys are just way overtrained and pushing it too hard. And I mean, uh, the the some of the injuries are freaks. Like uh, Dominic Cruz didn't even get hurt from working out. I think somebody fell on his knee or something. Or, um, but. What do you think? I think they need to train smarter, too. And I think Rogan made that point on his podcast. Like, if you're a fucking world champion, why are you training in an area where someone can roll you Good point. from behind? Because I think he, the other person was Rashad Evans that it happened to, too, where he got his knee rolled oh, yeah, from yeah. behind. So I forgot about that. So if you're a pro, why aren't you off just, like, one-on-one? -on -one? Like, this is my cage. We're training in here. Yep. Get the fuck away. It seems curious. It's a team. It's a curious it's a team rash sport, yet it's not. Of injuries. Yeah. So the we're all over thing, the place. <laughs> we are. <laughs> wow. Here's the last thing. So we're, we're talking about this contest we're going to run. We're, we're partnering contest? with BetDSI. It's going to be a UFC 148 contest coming up this week. You're going to have to watch. We'll post it on Facebook and all that good shit. And there'll be f top five winners are going to get prize packs from BetDSI. We're going to be giving away fucking whatever's Big last. Big Black Cox. <laughs> yeah, damn right. Whatever's left of our bumper sticker stash, okay. people that sign up, and if this contest is successful, the next time we run another one with them, there's going to be cash money prizes. Cash money prizes. So stay tuned, watch, win, fuck, fight, freedom, eat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and drink beer. Yes, all that good shit. So with all that being said, are we ready? Ingo's got a plethora of notes. He's ready to spew out knowledge and nonsense. Sometimes. The drop of a hat. Gray Maynard. <laughs> it's just the yeah. bully versus the carpenter. Another, everybody. another UFC on FX that may not make attendance history. 200,000. <laughs> Are you saying the game's going to be 200,000? It is it in be Atlantic less. City. So. And this is a bigger card. I think this is a much bigger main event, obviously. Do you, uh, oh, it's in Atlantic City. I didn't know that. Yes. June 22nd. Cool. UFC on, on Friday. FX4. What does Ravel mean? Is that a sponsor? Or is that the name of it? I have no idea. I just pull images and don't even look at them. Nice. Until okay. right now. So. Shall we? Yes. We have Gray. The bully. Maynard. Oh, I want to say more. Go ahead. Slash. I got a bitch tattoo on my back. Is that tramp stamp? Tramp stamp. Yes. It, it's so hot. <laughs> Ten, one, and one. See, just, I think just uh, for that reason, I'm not going to pick him. That is, <laughs> that's retarded. 
Yeah. What? Uh, uh, digress. Stop. Versus Clay. The Carpenter! Yeah, he's 29 and 12. Maynard, 20% of his wins by KO, 80% by decision. Epic. Wow. Guida, 52% by submission, 14% by KO, and the odds from Bet DSI. Guida at plus 265, Maynard at minus 325. So Maynard is the heavy favorite in this thing, right? Yes, and I think it's curious. Why is that, Matt? Because my eyeball itches. It does? No. So, <laughs> are you all right over there? I'm just making sure my microphone is working yeah, properly. Yeah, new mics and new audio. And I'm, I'm not sure, sure it's if all it going to work out perfectly. Testies, one, two. And then I'll be like looking up here at some point going, oh, my God. My balls. Take takedown. Itching. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Great. <laughs> You're not it's good to know. I will feel safe and secure for the well, rest of the show. There are much bruises in this. It seems Enough like to they get don't you listen. pulled over and hauled away without They're a driver's license. It's from G Salzburg, Germany, though. It's all good. Fucking awesome. So, Austria. Maynard, he's coming off of his, not two losses to Edgar, but a draw and a loss. And in both right. fights, he went balls to wall in the first round. Yep. Kind of gassed himself out a little bit and couldn't always quite make the comeback he needed to make. So, uh, it's a curious strategy from the man. I'm worried about his mental state in this because you've seen it before. When guys take their first loss, what happens to them? Do they do they progress like a, a Brandon Vera? Well, they drive down the, the highway, we're drinking Red Bulls, fucking <laughs> chasing the cops like Rampage. Well, Fuck that, you all. That wasn't a first <laughs> loss. Oh, but, uh, or, no, hold that thought. <laughs> John Jones. Oh, driving down the highway, getting fucked up, so let's crash my car into the trees. And going, go. yeah. So you got it. God is good. Yeah. But he was able to make the comeback after Ridiculous. one loss. That's the point. John Jones? Yeah. But it was a, a bullshit loss. Okay. But I'm just saying to the mental state, is he going to be able to recover from that? I don't know. It just seems like Guida... I'll argue this point, and I think it's pretty clear. He always has the best, but has the best cardio in fucking the UFC, Could maybe be. in all of MMA. It's yeah. it's up there. It you is. know, he's never fought, or at least in the UFC, he's never fought a five round fight. So first mm -hmm. time to fight a five rounder in the UFC. But he always oh seems yeah, to, this is a five rounder. I didn't yeah, he okay. always seems to be fresh. Oh, I don't. I hope it is because fucking a the the other FX one wasn't. No yeah, I'm going. I'm. Fuck you, is this better be a five-rounder? I can't it should be, yeah. double check it, but I'm saying it's going to be five rounds, so you better be. Because otherwise, my all bets are off, and everything I say is bullshit. Because I'm bank banking on five rounds. Okay. And I'm banking on Guida with the strategy using the Greg Jackson system and the Greg Jackson plan to look at what Edgar did. And Edgar used cardio, Edgar used speed, Edgar used footwork. Granted, the first round of both of those Edgar fights didn't quite work out to Edgar's advantage, but he was able to maintain and come back. Mm -hmm. Guido could be smart, because the other thing about Maynard, I question is, is his, his fucking game plan. Like, if the first time you fight Edgar and you're not able to finish him, why do you go after him the same way in the second time you fight him like you did the first time? I always say you should go for the submission. Like, if you've got that guy rocked and rocked and... Going for the sub? Yeah. Sum it up. So, to me, it shows me he's not learning from his mistakes. Okay. So, that's where I see a guy like Guida can go, huh, I can just fucking stick, move, stick, move, mix a takedown in, okay. gas him out, cardio him out, and fucking split decision win for Guida. Okay. What say you? I'll buy that. The only thing, you know, the, the biggest thing I think about when I, when I looked at this fight was, yes, Guida has great cardio, yes, he's tough, he's strong, whatever. The one thing he doesn't have is amazing speed, like Frankie Edgar had. So I think Maynard coming... i say he's quick, but yes, not amazing speed. Right. So Gr Maynard coming off those two fights is going to not be that ex the surprise by Clay's like, crazy style because he just fought a guy who was like a fucking, like a, what do you call Whirling Dervish, you always use that? Yeah, or yeah. Uh, Tasmanian so, Yeah, exactly. I mean... What was the other one? What was know. the Caprito one? It was like talking about the little guys fighting the 135. Like cats? Yeah, like cats. Squirrels. They're fucking squirrels. I saw a squirrel fight on uh, the internet. It was crazy. Go crazy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think Maynard's going to be surprised by anything. And I, I get your point about not changing his game plan, but here's the thing. Mm. The guy came in and, and he should have finished Edgar in the first fight. I mean, he 
come on, any other person that had been fucking knocked out in that first round they had. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I can understand him coming in and saying, you know what, why change the game plan? Because he just got lucky. I sh- he should have been done. So he comes back and does the same thing. And I thought the same thing happened the first round. He almost finished him, and then, you know, he gassed out a little bit. But I just feel like Clay um, doesn't have much in the stand-up for Gray, and I think Gray's a really good wrestler too. So I don't think Guida's going to be able to control him as well as he, as he should. And therefore, when, they, when it comes to the striking, I think this is going to look a lot like the Diego Sanchez fight where there's an exchange at some point, mm-hmm. and Gray has a lot of power. I think he's going to knock him out, unfortunately. I'm a big Clay Guida fan. But I think Clay gets knocked out. I, I think he's never nonsense. been knocked out before. He's never been knocked out. But I think in this fight he will get knocked out. I'm predicting round two. I think I think he's gonna get clipped. Because Gray's got a lot of power. People, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of his. But I one thing I will say, he's got a good right hand, and he's tough. And uh, you know, he, he's good. Obviously, he's one of the top guys in this weight division. And Guido seems to always like get to a point and then drop. Get to a point and then drop. And mm-hmm. I want to see him win, but it's a it's tough. It's it's real tough. Guida, Guida, and Guida. That's all I gotta say. Okay, take that. I hope he wins. I'm gonna be rooting for Guida, but this is tough. That's all we're talking about on this card, right? Yeah, damn right. <laughs> What's the eight ball? Magic eight ball is Who else say? is fighting? I don't even know. Yeah. I'm just gonna tune in at like 10:40. Gray Maynard. <laughs> That's <be> good. Okay. <laughs> Move right along into the most epic card of the year. UFC 140. You need big X's. Yeah, wait. Oh, it's not oh, this no, he's one. Still on there. Someone might die. We got to change it. Oh, sorry. Silver Franklin. Oh, I thought you were going to have the other one. Ooh, we're d- Russo versus Verdum. Yeah, and a bunch of guys from Brazil that I don't know yet. Hey, these Because I have not seen this show. Which show? The Ultimate Fighter Brazil. Oh, it's not two episodes. It's supposed to be, I think it's start airing tonight. This is Sunday night. Oh. On Fuel TV, which, I again, don't we don't give. <laughs> Sorry, don't have this channel. <laughs> Fucking assholes. Fucking assholes. All right. We got Fabrizio. Uh, I forgot his nickname. Uh, Vi, something. Uh, Vi Cavallo, maybe. Something. Yeah, something like that. Verdum, he's 15 and 5. Versus Mike. Epic Hammer Fist. The damn right. Of death. Russo. He's 15, 1 and 1. Verdum, this is the scary thing. 53% of wins by submission. 27% by KO. Russo, 53% by submission, 27% by KO. Exactly equal their finishing rates and exactly equal how they finished. Okay. Curious. Odds from BetDSI. Russo at plus 350, Verdum at minus 500. Ouch. What do you see going on here? All right. Uh, Well, Verdum is one of those guys that may have one of the scariest um, games off his back in, in, Mm -hmm. in MMA, I think. Uh, when Fedor, uh, you know, decided to jump into his guard, that was probably one of the, the craziest things. Um, you know, most people ever, would think that no one would ever do that. It's I mean, pretty disrespectful. What's that? The jump, <laughs> the jump into, like, into fuck your guard. Oh, well, well, you went to the guard? Good work. Yeah. If, well, like, the analogy is Belcher playing footsies with Paul Harris. So it enough. can work, but fuck. Dangerous. Yeah. It's very dangerous. Yeah. So, um, and I, I think, you know, Russell's submission um, finishes have come... Many years ago, I think he hasn't finished a fight via sub in, like, what, ever? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a long time. So, I mean, I'm sure his jiu-jitsu is, you know, pretty good. And he has our coach, Comprito, as, as his coach, obviously. And I just think it's a really tall order for him to go into Brazil. Um, you know, the elements, the crowd, the, the nationalism and everything else. I think here's where his chance comes into play, is, is if he's able to um, take this fight into the deep rounds. But I just feel like... Verdum's got too many weapons uh, on the ground, and possibly even his last fight we saw him, you know, against Nelson. He's looking friggin' what the fuck? He's got Muay Thai all of a sudden? You know, I'm not sure what's going on. He's like a fucking uh, Muay Thai specialist. Yeah, so I'm going to predict Verdum via decision. I don't think he finishes uh, Russo. I think it's going to be a tough fight. And I, I really want to see Mike, Mike win, but, I mean, the guy doesn't even train full time. So it's, it's, it's hard for this level of competition for him to, um, I think, for him to go against some of the best out there because he's he's not really 100% doing this as a job. I think he's got, you know, as a policeman and everything else. So, but I will be rooting for him. Hopefully, he can pull it out. What well, do you say? It, it's tough because we've looked at they've had two other cards, the UFC in Brazil of late. Mm-hmm. I forget the percentage, but I'll tell you, it's probably 95% of Brazilian fighters fighting Brazil win their fights. So I'm gonna have a hard time 
picking anybody else. If you're not from Brazil, I'm probably not picking you to win the fight. Just based on that stat alone. Uh, Russell, I think he's on like something, maybe like an 11-fight win streak. Yeah, he's only lost once. To Karatanov by a questionable armbar. Yep. Four fights in the UFC, and it seems like he always finds a way to win. He's got a hell of a chin. You take punishment. But it's tough, uh, really tough. The question mark for him is his game plan at times where, you know, like look at the last fight with Enemo. You, you would have thought, hey, I should probably keep it standing with this jiu-jitsu guy. Yep. But he, he took him down, was able to win. Can he do the same thing with Verdum? And that's the question mark I have. Like, if I'm Russell and I'm fighting Verdum, where the hell do I want this fight to take place? Against I'm the cage. I'm not sure. Against the cage. You want it against the cage? I want him, I want I want him wearing Verdum out in the first round with some, like, Greg Jackson shit. Mm-hmm. Just don't even do anything else. Just every time they get to standing, just drive him into the cage. Just put those shoulders in his midsection, get him breathing hard, and then in the second round go for a finish. But it's That's... also curious because if Verdum gets against the cage and locks the clinch and then spins it around, then you're going to be eating some knees of those Verdum. It's all good. Roy Nelson type he knees. He can take it. That's not going to bother him. Well, that's the thing. It's a curious fight because it's almost the same fight. Like, Russell and Nelson are pretty similar yeah. as far as, like, chin, uh, body type, maybe. Actually, Mike's been looking good. I saw him, I saw him in the gym, like, at least it, No homo. Week. No, seriously. I, I, it seems like, I don't know what his weight is. He slim, seems like he's slimmed down, especially in the last so may, six weeks or so. Maybe it's the cardio. He's going to push yeah. the cardio. He's having a good training camp. I mean, I see him train at least once or twice a week, and he looks good. I just, I just, oh, fuck, that's tough. Going into Brazil. And being, the, like, the co-main event for the first time in the UFC for him, having to handle the press, fighting in another country, going to be, like, Everyone's going to be booing the shit out of him, like, fuck you, yep. white devil, or whatever they yell at him, the uh, gay terms in Brazil, whatever <laughs> they terms. said. So gay. Yeah, it is. is gay. It is what it is. So It is. I, I think I'm going to take Verdum with the decision. I don't think he's going to put Russell away. Uh, I'd love to see this play out on the ground, but I think it's going to play out standing. Yeah. I mean, we'll see, but the the thing the the other difference maker that Russell has from Nelson is he can actually take the fight to the ground. Yeah, and Nelson has a trouble doing that. So he does. Do you want to play in his guard? Maybe he'll be all right. I don't. I just don't see Verdum submitting him. I think it's a, a decision win. And I still I wouldn't be surprised if Russell wins. Take that. No, I wouldn't either. I mean, people underestimate this guy too. He's won so a lot, and he He's seems top to, ten. He, Take I, that. <laughs> Who's number 10? Big words. There are many on the web who disagree with, with that statement, but I think you're, I, you, it's hard to argue yeah. with, with the with the track record he has. So, Do you think it's going to be an exciting fight, or are we going to have a, like a really drawn-out, heavyweight, getting tired kind of a production? I think it's going to be a grueling three rounds. Hopefully entertaining, but you cannot bet. Some, I guess you can't bet against the hammer fist of death. That's true. So, I'm going to, though. I want to see him win. That'd be awesome. It's fucking hell. I can't say I, I wouldn't be happy. <laughs> What's next for him? Cain <laughs> Velasquez. Seriously. Like so. It always Kane seems like he should be getting a named fighter, and he finally does, and it's like, wow, you're getting a murderer now. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Great. Why couldn't you get Big Nog or someone? Yeah. But, anyways. 8-Ball says. Magic 8-Ball is taking. Verdum. Ouch. That's oh. good. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. That's actually good. I didn't. I totally did not. Did you plan jinx, that? No. Okay. Nice. <laughs> that's totally on the up and up. So, I'll take us right Very in. Very good. So. Sponsors? Yeah. Sponsors! I don't, I don't click slides. We have MMAHQ.com, the world's best daily deal site. Featuring the latest fighters, trends, and brands. They sell one item per day until it's Ooh. gold. Ooh. We're getting a 10 Eastern. 11, no, that's wrong. 11 Eastern, 10 Central, 9 Mountain, or 8 Pacific. Also, Yay. we are sponsored by BetDSI.com, where you can bet on all things sports. Uh, this weekend, I think they just had the, what is it, the Triple Crown, the Preakness, or whatever the fuck. Some horse pulled out. <laughs> Literally. Horse cock. Yeah. <laughs> but, Enjoy. Take it. Yes. Um, and uh, you should check them out. And, of course, Matt mentioned the contest earlier. So. Yes. And remember, use code MMA Nuts for the biggest bonus you could ever believe. The biggest bonus? Yeah. Big black cock. 
big bonus. And uh, we're also sponsored by Bards. That's it? Yep. Bards. And soon, <laughs> we will have a new sponsor. Urs. Sponsors. Two new sponsors. And one of them happens to be a preluded on the show. Should we give out a free bumper sticker to the person who posts on our Facebook first? Who it is? Done. Done. It's pretty obvious if you just... I'm going to guess it's HTML. Yes. Matt gave me some reading material before the show. Ready? Reading web pages Here for was dummies. 1995. This is my favorite one. I have a very eclectic mix of books. He does. So you do your web coding and then you try to become a psychic at the same time. And then I, I fly paper airplanes and I juggle. It's all good. It is all good. Are we ready? Are we ready? We're, at, we're main event already? Yeah. The, the, this may be the biggest selling card ever in UFC Testing. history. You're we fine. Haven't, we haven't gone that long. You're fine. Like 30 minutes only. It's a short show. we got that some shit to talk about. A, well, you viewer may all be a half hour salad. Okay. Very good. All right. Hang on. i got to scroll. This is madness. This, this card is so fucked up. How many times did they shuffle this around? I don't even know. I have, well, that's the thing. Like, how <laughs> pissed would you have been? Because, like, say you're from anywhere but Brazil, and you book all your travel accommodations because you know fucking Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen is probably going to be, like, awesome. the best fight ever, at least ever. for 2012. Yes. it was the first time they fought, so history should repeat on that one. And then they fucking move it, and then other shit, and then this is supposed to be uh, Silva versus Belfort. Vitor broke his hand. And then Belfort breaks his hand. And then Silva says he's a pussy and his wife should stay out of talking shit. And, uh, I think something is lost in translation when this shit talking happens. I don't Somehow, train the gays. Okay? I, don't, I don't know. I'm lost. That's all I'm saying. All right, so we got Vanderlei. The Axe Murderer! Silva, he's 34 and 11 versus Rich. Ace. Catchweight Franklin, he's 28 and 6. Silva, 71% of his wins by KO, 9% by submission. Franklin, 54% by KO, 36% by submission. And the odds from Bet DSI, Silva at plus 140, Franklin at minus 190. What do you see going on here? Oh, my question is, is this a catchweight fight or are they fighting? It a... is a catchweight. Okay. What do they, what do they agree I to? I want to say 190. Okay, fair enough. I didn't think 190, Franklin 195, would go down. 190. There's no point. Both guys have cut that much weight. If they're, I mean, no. that's the reason. There's no point. All right. I get just weigh in and whatever it is, we'll Anthony Rumble Johnson it. Very good. Um, okay. I don't want to sound rude when I say this, but sometimes I think they put fights on just to put fights on, and it's not necessarily for any type of gain in, in rankings or for the fans or whatever. They just had to fucking put somebody in there, and I think that this is one of those cases. I am not really that excited about seeing these two guys go at it again. I like both guys individually, but, man, I mean... Not cumulatively? No. Together, we've Fuck. seen it once already. I mean... Okay, so here's another, the same thing. You know, Vanderlei is like decorated guy in Brazil. Of course, Rich is like Mr. America. So what the fuck's going to happen in this fight? I don't know. But I think hmm. Rich has been known to knock out aging UFC slash pride veterans slowly over the last few years. He's, he's put Chuck, Chuck down. Lindell. Yeah. Um, you know, he, but he, he, when he fought Vitor Belfort, what happened? Yeah. Yeah, well, that was at 185, I think, wasn't it? Or was yeah. it at was it, no, no, was that was 185. A was it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I don't remember. It'll all work <laughs> out in the end. Uh, but, you know, I, I really feel like Vanderlei is going to come out the same way he did against Lieben because it's his hometown. He's excited. He wants to do something crazy for the fans. And I think Rich is more of a thinking kind of a fighter where he really calculates things. I think he's going to do his best to survive that initial onslaught. And he probably has studied Vanderlei very well, especially since they fought the first time. And I, I kind of want to say, as much as it pains me, that he's probably going to knock him out in the first minute. Who's going to knock who out? Rich is going to knock out Vanderlei Silva. Ooh. Because I think Vanderlei, there's, I mean, the, the guy doesn't know anything other than go out on your shield. So especially in his home, like in his home country, everything, he's, fans are going nuts. He's going to come out balls to the wall. So... That's my prediction. I think it's going to be over fast, and it's going to be crazy. And uh -huh. Because you're betting against Brazil and Brazil. You're out of your mind. Hey. I hey, think we're doomed. Ho. I like how you
spell for doom, by the way, with a D O O M. It's awesome. <laughs> well, I put a V E R D O O M. I love, I love it. They're doom. They're and doom. then I try to look it up on the internet, and it's like, what do you mean, W E R D U M? <laughs> yeah. Put the B. It's cool name. Dumb. You should have dumb. like a Darth Vader type. Come yes. on, music or it's whatever. all good. So, a couple of question marks for Franklin. Uh, one, he has he's taken this fight on short notice because he was supposed to fight. Kung Lee at 148, so he's had a... Didn't he also get injured, Kung Lee? No, he's still oh. he's fighting Cote, because oh. Cote is stepping in for gotcha. okay. Franklin. Sorry. But he hasn't changed his whole game plan, because Kung Lee and Vanderlei Silva have all different kind of styles of fights. <laughs> right, so right. it's like, fuck, man, I was just training for this guy, now i got to train for this guy, because I am the company man, and I am the catchweight. So you need me, I'm there for you. Mm -hmm. So he better get a cushy UFC job when all this shit's said and done looks at Chuck Liddell. So, the other thing about Franklin, though, he hasn't fought since February 5th of 2011, Whoa. and he's also coming off of a shoulder surgery, and at being 37 years old, uh, that's a little challenging, and I don't like that. He's also coming off that loss to Forrest Griffin. Granted, it was at 205, and Griffin just kind of took him down and uh, oversized him and you know, worked him that way. What else? Vanderlei, look at him. Seven fights in the UFC, three wins, four losses. He said he wants to even it up really badly. He, he, won, he, he wants won. to be four and four, a <laughs> solid 500. <laughs> solid 500. <laughs> right around the or Mendoza line. Yeah. Uh, I just I don't think you can beat Brazil on Brazil, and I think his blitzing style can take Franklin out. Sure. As much as I don't want to see it happen. Still like Franklin, always was one of my favorite fighters. But the thing I always thought about him is he may be the best five-round fighter there was. Because mm -hmm. when he was the champ, granted, Anderson Silva, he couldn't beat him. And his fucking clinch and the knees and the broken nose and the, the lost <laughs> work and modeling jobs and all yeah. that good shit. But <laughs> I don't know what he's all into. Okay. I'm not going to say <laughs> I that. I don't know either. I'm going to proceed <laughs> Moving forward. On. But he, best five-round fighter, because he, it always seemed like he would turn it on in, like, the fourth and fifth round. when yeah. he, he just, like, the, the performer, like, against Evan Tanner, where he's just beating the shit out of him. I'm like, oh, man, is this going to stop? And who was the other guy? Uh, fuck. The Crow, David Loazzo, oh, yeah, like, the beating he put on beating. him. Like, he put some beatings on people, and this is one of those fights, like, if it was to, say, to get to a fourth or a fifth round, like, holy shit. I mean, that's all Franklin. If, yeah. he, can, if he can survive, like, rounds one and two, then it's like, okay, now it's my zone. Drizzt Frank, Franklin, I throw you that left body kick, forget about it. Mm -hmm. So, it'll be interesting, kind of, if it gets past round three, but I see it's a first round Vanderlei Silva KO, old school Vanderlei, and let me tell you, uh, Pride Vanderlei and UFC <laughs> cannot be fucked with, as we found out this weekend in a, a little UFC, or no, that was a Pride tournament. The Pride ran. tournament, yeah. With three of us running a little tournament, a little 16 man UFC Undisputed 3 tournament, and Pride Vanderlei is a bitch, man. Yeah, he's a motherfucker. <laughs> well, he couldn't even do anything. Yeah. Right? Son of a bitch. Fucking knocked everybody out. He did. Like he had somewhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> Took like no damage. Yeah. Was split creek. Uh, was that you? Was that you and Brian, right? Yeah, that was the okay. final match. I lost. That both was fucking finals. awesome. I wish you would have recorded that. You, you you guys knocked each other down, and it was all crazy, and there were scrambles, and then you knocked him down. He gets up. He's like, oh no, boom! Yeah. Good night. God that was it. awesome. So some fun times in that game. Yeah, for sure. Check Congo better get some cardio because he <laughs> throw three hard kicks with Check Congo. And he's You're fucking done. gassed out. You did very well, though. It was interesting. It was best. fun. You should do that. If you got a bunch of buddies, run a tournament and let everybody run their guy through. So. Yeah. All right. I'm taking Silva. You're taking Franklin. C, senor. Magic Ape Wall. That's what everybody says. Vanderly Silva. Are you ready for this? Well, viewer mail action. I feel like there should be music playing. Something. Oh. Music. Sweet so, music. Nick Hartman asked a, a, a fucking assload of questions. 
reviewer mail. Okay. This was a while ago. We emailed them. So we're going we're gonna to handle some of them. Are you ready? I'm ready. So if there was a drinking game to go along with MMA Nuts, what would be some of the rules? I.e., take a shot when Matt makes a cock balls reference. You'd be drunk pretty fast, I think. <laughs> I think that's, well, it's like you, you can't do, like, swearing because you'd be fucked up in the first, I don't know, two minutes of the yeah. show. You might be dead. You, you don't want to advocate killing yourself. Well, I, I think two come to mind. What's that? If you, a big black cock. Well, cock and balls, yeah. Oh, does that count? Sure. Okay. If it's in the genre. I think it has to be specifically big black cock. Oh. Or, that's my favorite kind. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, a food reference. Yep, I think. you got it. Or what else is there? Tangent. Any tangent. Any tangent. Because any... that's pretty safe <laughs> that we're probably going to, I think we probably ran about five so far. Yeah. We should have a tangent counter. Uh, you know what? One of these shows, tangent. let me edit it, and I'll fucking, I'll give okay. you the, the shot count. Okay. Holy shit. Well, I could always send you, like, the final version, and then you could add your yeah, little flavor fine. to it. <laughs> Mad flavor. You're like, why are there all, why is there a big black cock <laughs> in the corner? Yeah. Why is there a hamburger and fries? No reason. It's all good. But yes, I think those that would be epic. Next question. Besides big country, what fighters does Dana White not want to succeed due to marketability of the UFC as a mainstream sport? That's a tough question. You got anybody? Well, I think Mayhem was the one we talked about before. Oh, yeah. Good point. That was the big one. But as far as anybody else, I think he generally wants people to succeed, but it goes back to the person cannot get bigger than the brand itself. Maybe BJ Penn? He seems to dog on BJ a lot. Yeah. And who else? Who was else? He was dogging somebody else of late. Oh, Shogun. That whole bullshit. Oh. Tell him, say what he happened turned with that? On, I don't know. He said that he turned on that Glover... Man. Tay Shara fight, uh, saying it's all this. But I don't know why he would come out and say that in public, um, trying to make because Shogun look bad. Because he thinks it, yeah. It's kind of shitty. If I'm Shogun, I, I probably don't want to face murderers at this stage of my career. What no, the what fuck for? do I have to prove? Right. I just want to. I don't want easy fights, but I want fights of yeah. maybe people at the same age as me, like Dan Henderson. Yeah. That was a perfect fight to make, and we had a, a pretty fucking good battle there. Yeah. You know? glo that Glover guy is a fucking maniac killer, dude. That guy's crazy scary. I, I don't. He's the one to watch for sure. I, I want to see him and Gustafson go at it. I think that'd be fucking awesome. But I think Gustaf There's another guy. Gustafson's injured. You know that? He just had surgery. I think he's out oh, like uh, eight months or something crazy. Six months. Let's just f fucking get rid of the UFC then. <laughs> Kill it. We'll just go to Bellator. Okay. All right. Those guys get injured too. I'm sure. It doesn't seem as often, though. Like, they I don't have insurance. Health care, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. That's the problem. Like, ah, my balls hurt. I don't want to go get them sucked up. All right. Anyway, what's your opinion on the future of the UFC video games now that the UFC has signed with EA Sports? Does this mean Randy will be in the UFC game, possible Fedor as a hidden character? Or? Uh, I don't have many thoughts on this as far as, like, the guys that are going to be in it, mm -hmm. but I, I'm worried because... I stopped playing Madden, and I was a huge Madden fan for many years because I just finally realized, you know what? They're giving me the same thing with just a little bit extra sugar sprinkled on top every year, over and over and over. And then what was the final nail in the coffin was when you can buy booster packs for your teams for like five bucks so that your team can get like special stats so that your season would go better and shit. Like, it's so stupid. I mean, they're, they're charging for all this download content. I'm just worried it's going to be like that. So well, gonna... it, then it works out to, like, your your investment in a game is $100 yeah. minimum. It's a lot. Which is bullshit. Like, who, you know, when you look back at games, like, who has $100, you know, to drop each fucking game? It's too much, yeah. It's a little bit much. Especially if you want to keep up with uh, every UFC that's on pay-per-view. Good luck. Yeah. And be broke. Well, the one thing that positively may come out of it, though, is I think EA is very good at the online market. They understand how to do multiplayer very well, mm. which I think is a shortcoming of, of this, the last few THQ games. When you play online, it's bullshit. There's lag. There's guys cheating. There's all kinds of wacky shit. People quitting if they're losing. It just becomes ridiculous. So you might see more of like the fantasy aspect where you have fight camps and shit really matters and there's cool shit. Maybe they'll just start doing actual entrances that you can pick music for and do all this cool stuff. Game Face, you know how they, you were talking about this last night, 
that you can take a snapshots of your head and it can like yeah you, you look. should be in the game yeah totally because if it's in the game it's in the game right that's what they tell me so ea sports yeah, I, it's going to be interesting uh, the first edition is what next year are they saying 2013 i don't think they have officially stated a release but that would seem to make About the most sense yeah probably around it seems like it'll be around christmas would be my bet but yeah they might jump start one this year that'd be interesting probably it doesn't not seem the like they have enough time to get for a good this, game together no. Cause you, uh, you well, you have the engine for the the MMA game they did have. I I never played it, so I don't know how good or bad that was. It was pretty good. I played it. It's different, but I think there's a. It's kind of like guys were Sega football fans versus Madden, or there's NBA versus like uh, I don't know NBA whatever 2K versus mm-hmm. NBA EA NBA. So it's different, but. I think their striking was better, but their ground game was different. I don't know. The so. one thing I, I, I hate about, and I'll say about EA, is just that, or just in competition in general, when one person has exclusive rights to any league, mm-hmm. that you may not get the best product as possible. Yeah. I, I kind of wish you, you could have both of them, or at least two people competing with the same product. Yeah. Now, like, if you're going to play a football game, basically, what game are you going to play? Madden. Right. Yeah. There's one. So you they don't dominate have soccer to, too. They got the soccer game. You don't have to put out the best product always because you're the only product. Right. So concerning. Definitely. But it could be good. So it remains to be seen. How's that? That's fair. fair. Uh, Connor Hills asks, "Do I look like a bitch?" Yes. Yeah. Fuck you, Connor Hills. I was gonna say he looks like more like a whore, but. <laughs> I don't Man know. whore. I don't have my notebook or it's more iPad, ass so. in the toilet. I can't seat. tell. I can't tell if you look like a bitch or not, sir. I, I can just see this little like half inch by half inch picture. I can't quite click on it. Uh, Robert Lilly asks, "What would be your entrance music if you were a fighter, and who is your favorite fighter?" Go ahead. You go first. Uh, walk-in music, ACDC, for those about to rock. I oh, think cool. um, Rich Franklin's walked in to that. You need something like mellow that's not going to get your adrenaline rushing like too crazy. So you need to kind of like, yeah, it's kind of mellow it in. You got to maintain, maintain. You don't want to be all fucking amped up. You don't want to be all smiley. You don't want to come into Eminem because there's a fucking curse. <laughs> Everybody that comes to that shit is going to lose. Eminem fighter favorite, always lose. Favorite fighter, I would. If I gotta pick one, I gotta I gotta go with Alan Belcher right now. I mean, I've He's been hot, banking sure. him for a while, so one fighter I'll take him. Cool. What you got uh, my favorite fighter. I would say is still gotta be probably B J Penn, who's currently fighting. It was Chuck Liddell until he retired. Um, I hope um, I hope he takes that fight with Roaring. Well, I, the rumor was he took it. Okay. So I, I they haven't official. officially scheduled it, but there was, uh, I want to say there's a rumor. About it being somewhere in Canada, imagine that. It seems like a passing of the guard fight. But yeah, I think anyway. BJ can win. He Doubtful. thinks not. I think he's gonna get mauled. I think he's gonna uh, be fucking ass raped. But hey, anything can happen in true. MMA. That's true. It smells like it. That's <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it's funny you mentioned ACDC because I was gonna say like a thunderstruck like kind of song mm-hmm. would be cool, like something like that or yeah. or, or Metallica. I like uh, Brock comes out to San- Enter Sandman. Mm-hmm. I like that one too. It's a little bit it's too, too amped crazy. up. But <laughs> I would lose my yeah. shit on the way to the fucking yeah. octagon. Yeah, I, I would have. To, I would agree with you. The song would definitely be something that is like energetic, yet not like balls to the wall. You know. Yeah. So because I think it would. Maybe I'd come out to like fucking mariachi band. <laughs> That'd be fine. You can throw everybody the fuck off. Yeah. Or like Michael Bublé or something. You should come out to Enigma. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> Why not? Hey, it all works out. Well, Frank Fleming also asked a similar question. It was about fighting in the UFC. What would be your walkout music? And he said, "What do you?" We kind of touched on this. What do you think about Shogun ducking the fight with Glover? What do you? How do you feel about Shogun and Vera main eventing a Fox card? Uh, it's the best of the best. I actually like that one. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting. I think Vera can win that fight. I think it's a tall order, but I think he can. He could. I like yeah. I like Shogun's chances. So. Me too. But I think Vera can win, definitely. And that's, you know, talking about Vera, that's 
it's kind of a, a, a sad thing because when he was dominating as a heavyweight, this was when he was undefeated. He was one of my favorite fighters. I'm like, man, this guy is cocky as shit. Yep. He, he's just crushing people. And he's talking about, I'm going to drop down to 205 and fucking take the title there and take the title here. And then, you know, he takes his first loss and he's just fucking never the same guy. He's yeah. never recovered from that. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate. I liked watching him fight and I liked him being cocky because he was, at that time, was actually able to back it up. Yeah. So very interesting i can't pronounce the name sorry yogish mavilla do you call shenanigans on bisving's injury <laughs> i think you said it, that it was it's quite in, you know what i think actually mm. now that you mention it i feel like maybe he's always had a problem with it and now is a good time to get surgery because he doesn't want to take that fight with that guy anyway so yeah okay, Boach, i'm gonna that, have that surgery. fight made no sense it was yeah. just because boach called him out the fight with belcher is what he needs belcher bisving i like belcher's chances in that one that's going to be tough yeah. uh, for Bisping, too. But meniscus is, what, six to eight weeks at least, probably? It's not a huge, huge... It sounds bad, but I don't think it's that big of an injury. Sounds fake. I don't know. It sounds <laughs> fake. So, I don't know. It sounds like he's going to bake some brownies or something. Good. I'll end viewer mail. Take that. All right. If you would like to send us a question to the show... Where can they do that and go? You can do so at fans at MMAnouts.com. <laughs> We're going to have to set up another... That email address is getting so blown up right now. Go to Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, Tweeter, Twatter. We try to respond to everybody that emails that address. It's so impossible. Just let me tell you that there's a lot of emails in there. Let so if you don't get a response throat. right away, <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on yeah. it. Sometimes, you know what happens is that we pick the one that came in the most recent because it's too difficult to go back and read all the fucking emails that come through. But keep sending them. So and go to our Facebook, go to YouTube, uh, like, 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 subscribe. iTunes. If you guys get us on iTunes, I know some of you guys do, and probably those are the people who are still watching right now. Mm. Click like and make a nice comment about the show on iTunes. Rate us up so we can get a little bit higher in the rankings. That's right. We've got a couple. We need all. We need like Five a thousand. Five is good, right? Yes. It's like a fist. Iron fist? Sure. Are those the best? <laughs> I don't know. I'd like my iron made of platinum. Okay. Maybe titanium. Titanium. Steel balls. This is the segment where we speak knowledge. Do we have knowledge? Yeah. So I'm editing a fight video the other day. Okay. And I think Joe Rogan yells out, oh, he just hit him on the button. And then my seven-year-old daughter comes in and was asking me about that. She's like, what's the button? Like, oh, that's a, a place on your head where you get hit and you get knocked out. She's like, oh, I thought it was your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> like, that might work, I was, too. I was thinking, how, how ridiculous would that be if you're, <laughs> if the belly button was really the button that you get to get knocked out on? So you got all these guys like throwing these queer like, body punches, like trying to hit that button. Yeah, it's like this. we got to fight like, some kind of queer, yeah, What if like, your head wasn't curvious for knockout? Style. That's I know. There's no sense to go to the head. You gotta go to the body all yeah. day, all night. Nick Diaz. Do you want to bitch? One bitch. One oh four and a half, cause he's gone. It's all good. He'll be back. So that's all I got. What did you think? Did we talk about the last show, of Game of Thrones? It was spoiler, everybody. Okay, if you have not seen the last episode of Game of Thrones, now's a good time to stop the video. Done. That Thanks. being said. What did I think? Um, I liked this the se- the episode right before this. The second this one, yeah, was much was much better. But this last one kind of tied up all the ends and, and opened up some new shit. Mm. My favorite part of the whole thing was the end, like the White Walkers. Holy shit, those things! Those guys were cool as fuck. Why did they let that one dude just sit there? Did they, or were they gonna do bad stuff to him? Apparently, my friend told me that in the books, some of, this is this is not how this happened. So. Um, I'm reading the first one, which is really good. I suggest it if you... Mm. Um, I have it on Kindle. I don't want to despoil the series for me. Well, you won't, because the first book is, is like the first season, but it's way more set up than mm. the first season did. The second book is, is part of the, the like first slash second season, and then the third book, I think, is not even season three yet. It's like se- So if you read the first two books, you're safe, and I heard they're good. The third one, apparently, is the best one, which is the season we're about to get into. Hopefully, Good. like, in the fall or whatever. Because this they... one was so lagging. There was, like, no action, no action, no action. And then second to last episode, all fucking hell breaks awesome. loose. 
Yeah. And then this one, like you're saying, is tying up all these loose ends and creating new ones. And there's this dichotomy between fire and ice in the whole show. Yep. And like the, who is it? The one dude's looking into the fire. You don't get to see what he's looking at. The, that evil. That I imagine priestess. he's looking at a lot of death and killing and betrayal and whatever. Yeah. So they're, they're on the fire side. The, the dragon queen, she's got the fire side, and then you have those white walkers who are on the ice side, so right. it's like this fire and ice thing that's going to fucking go down, and it should be awesome. I think the war is coming. It is. I'm ready. It's going to be sweet. And the midget still lives. Apparently so. Barely. That's, that's what it's about. But he has no power. <laughs> He's been stripped of everything. He's got the hooker. Ooh, this brings me to a good point. Go. I'm glad we talked about this. His girlfriend, or hooker slash lady... Yeah. She's a porn star. Did you know that? I want to. But doesn't get, she have a big full bush? Something like yeah. Uh, the, I didn't know they still did that in porn, unless it was amateur. She, so did you know this already? No. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Proceed. She, she is. Uh, she apparently she had a nose job. She, she looks different. If you Google her name and then you you can go to her Wikipedia, there it's listed in there. I, I have to thank the underground for this because those fucking perverts on the underground started this thread, and I started. Uh, I looked at this. She's got a lot of porn. Is she going to get fired like Shandella? No, this is, I, apparently they know this. I think she's not the only one either. Okay. So it makes sense to me they hire a porn actress to be a... a, a oh, hooker? <laughs> yeah. I mean, talk about authentic, but, you know, you're welcome, guys. Go out there and look it up. Go to her Wikipedia. I forgot her name. I don't have my laptop. So it's I, all good. I, I, I'm not going to look it up. No. Not now, anyway. Maybe later. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. When I hit the sack before I go to bed. Right. That's a... Double entendre, is that what it's called? That's right, Batman. <laughs> Not a monopia. <laughs> Whatever. Bam! I, I don't know. Smack! Boom! That's it. Pow. Kill it. The end of the show? You know it. 106. We'll see you guys next time. My name's Inga Weigels. Matt Griffith. Google that shit that I said. Okay. You're a hooker, get a nose job. <laughs> and you can be famous in Game of Thrones. Be a hooker again. Cock and balls. Yes. Two more shots. <laughs> don't kill yourself. Thanks for playing.